You! I know you stole it, Jane. You've always envied this ring, haven't you? This is why I can't ever trust the poor. You all could never resist the temptation. You're all just desperate for a taste of wealth and luxury that you will never have. Mary, I would never stoop so low as to steal from you or anyone else. Believe it or not, I have no interest in your material possessions. Let's work together to find it instead. Oh, spare me your lies, Jane. Remember this, Jane. Having the ring in your possession doesn't make you belong in this family. You're just a commoner, a nobody, trying to play the part of a lady. You'll never be one of us. My name is Jane, and let me take you back to that fateful evening when the story of the missing ring began. As I sat in the cozy living room of our shared family home, my mother-in-law Mary kept pestering us with her ring. In her defense, it was truly one of a kind, so it was hard to keep your eyes off it. The ring glistened on her finger as if commanding attention with its sheer beauty and elegance. It was a masterpiece of craftsmanship with an array of diamonds and a stunning sapphire centerpiece. The band itself was made of the finest platinum that is expertly polished to a mirror-like shine. If opulence and grandeur were a ring, it would be Mary's ring. Mary held her hand up, angling it just right to catch the light, causing the diamonds to sparkle and dance with brilliance. Isn't it simply breathtaking? This ring is a testament to our family's legacy and a mark of our impeccable taste and refined sensibilities. As Mary proudly displayed her prized possession, I couldn't help but feel a mixture of awe and envy. It was truly a rare gem with a monetary value that I could not even begin to imagine, but still, I can't even bring myself to touch it or be near it because I'm afraid to damage such expensive jewelry. Even if I would work for the rest of my life, I don't think I'll be able to pay for its repair. Mary had always been this way, constantly flaunting her wealth and belongings, especially that ring. It seemed like every chance she got, she would find a way to bring it up in a conversation, reminding everyone of her status and privilege. Even before I got together with John and became a part of the family, I had witnessed Mary's penchant for showcasing her material possessions. Whenever we had family gatherings or events, she would arrive in her finest attire. She would regale the guests with stories about her luxurious lifestyle, making sure everyone knew about her collection of valuables. The ring was an extension of her identity, that she and the ring were practically inseparable. Except for when she slipped, fearing it might get damaged, it was her pride and joy and she made sure the world knew it. As the years went by, her behavior didn't change. It seemed to intensify. With each passing gathering, she would find new ways to highlight her influence and subtly remind me of the disparity of our financial situations. Her remarks, although often disguised as innocent anecdotes, served as constant reminders of the privileges I didn't possess. Jane, dear, you simply must try on this ring sometime. I can see how much you admire it. Maybe you can borrow a bit of its magic and elevate your style. Her tone was laced with a hint of condescension against my humble background. Right when I was about to reply, she continued her jabs at me. But then again, I don't think this ring would suit you, dear. It has a certain aura? A presence that only a select few can truly carry off. I remained silent. When you're in this kind of situation where the power dynamics are evident, remaining silent is all that you can do. It's a family heirloom passed down through generations. It holds immense sentimental value and immense financial worth. That's why I did not give it to John when he married you. It takes more than marriage to be deserving of this. I felt a pang of hurt, but I refused to let it show. It's not because I don't care, but because I'm used to it at this point. I knew from the start that she thought John and I would never last. Aren't you going to say anything? I looked at my husband, begging for a little support from his mother's verbal attacks. 
well, my mother uh, has a point. You wouldn't know how to take care of it anyway because you've never owned anything near its value, uh, right? He stuttered with his gaze, avoiding me. I couldn't help but feel a sense of betrayal at how he prioritized his mother's approval instead of defending me. I had hoped that our bond as husband and wife would be strong enough to withstand the toxic influence of his mother's words. I realized I was alone in this battle. Perhaps it's for the best that this ring is up for auction. Two days from now, the ring will find its true value rather than be fall into the hands of someone who wouldn't appreciate its significance. Though the command struck a chord, I let it be. There was a small consolation in knowing that the auction would definitely benefit a worthy cause. The night wore on and little did we know that the events from that day would take an unexpected turn, further straining our dynamic. My mother-in-law's demeanor shifted from arrogance to sheer panic and our normally composed facade crumbled before our eyes. She went from room to room frantically searching every nook and cranny hopelessly trying to locate the precious heirloom. As our desperation escalated, so did her accusations. You! There it is. I became her target. It was only a matter of time for her to accuse me. You! I know you stole it, Jane. You've always envied this ring, haven't you? That is why I can't even trust the poor. You all could never resist the temptation. You're all just desperate for a taste of wealth and luxury that you will never have. Mary, I would never stoop so low as to steal from you or anyone else. Believe it or not, I have no interest in your material possessions. Let's work together to find it instead. Oh, spare me your lies. Remember this, Jane. Having the ring in your possession doesn't make you belong in this family. You're just a commoner and nobody trying to play the part of a lady. You'll never be one of us. She glared at me one last time, but I maintained my composure and let her have the last word because I knew I was innocent and time would reveal the truth. Mary stormed off and John followed her into her room probably attempting to calm her down and reason with her. The muffled sounds of their conversations echoed through the house, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Determined to find the missing ring, I tirelessly searched every corner of the house, hoping for a stroke of luck. Exhaustion eventually caught up with me, and I drifted off to sleep, my mind filled with worries and unanswered questions. The day of the charity event arrived. Confusingly, the morning brought a sense of calm. Mary had seemingly composed herself and we continued with our daily routines as if the fight had never occurred. I was surprised that John told me to prepare since we were still attending the auction. I don't think the ring was found because Mary would have been wearing it, but she wasn't. Perhaps she had more jewelry to auction off since she is wealthy after all. We arrived at the venue and Mary seemed so confident. As guests gathered in anticipation, she took the stage to share her latest jewelry piece. The room hushed, eager to hear her speak. She began her speech by captivating the audience with tales of her collection. She delved deeper into her story as her tone shifted. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I must address something that has deeply affected me. The ring that I intended to present to you tonight, a cherished family heirloom, has gone missing from my position two days ago. Gasps filled the room as the revelation hung in the air. And yesterday, another ring was stolen as well. The sneaky thief Jane seemed unstoppable, but little did my little daughter-in-law know I installed CCTV in my room. And I'm more than sure that the footage had captured her antiques. I froze in my seat. Panic coursed through my veins, my heart racing with anxiety. As Mary named me the thief, I was already on the verge of crying. I felt the eyes of the audience burning into me, my hands trembled, and I struggled to compose myself, fighting against the overwhelming emotions. I tried to defend myself to explain that I was innocent, but the words caught in my throat. 
drowned by the relentless judgmental whispers echoing through the room. I turned to my husband, John, searching for a flicker of support our belief in his eyes, but to my dismay, his gaze remained fixed on his mother. As tension reached its peak, the atmosphere in the room grew heavy with anticipation. All eyes were fixed on the large screen waiting for the CCTV footage to reveal the truth. The footage started to play. Mary's look of vulnerability shifted into confusion as the ambience of the room was suddenly filled with gasps and laughter rather than anger towards me. Mary turned around and to her demise, what unfolded on the screen was beyond anything she expected. The footage that was meant to capture me was footage of her sleepwalking. The screen continued to show Mary herself sleepwalking in a trance-like state. The audience watched in awe as Mary unknowingly moved around her room, clutching the missing room and other stolen jewelry, hiding them in various secret components and obscure corners. She placed it in places she couldn't recall in her waking moment. The truth finally unfolded before our eyes. The thief was not an external intruder, but rather Mary herself. Mary's obsession with her ring had become so consuming that it seeped into her subconscious mind, manifesting in her sleepwalking episode of protecting and hiding it. It was astonishing to witness Mary's arrogance in how she confidently and proudly showcased a CCTV footage so certain of my guilt without even bothering to review the evidence herself. It was a stark reminder that wealthy people are not always smart. At that moment, the weight of my accusations lifted, but the damage had already been done. I struggled to catch my breath, the panic subsiding but leaving behind a lingering ache. As the video played, I watched Mary panic and desperately rush towards the technical boot. Her face was etched with worry that she fumbled with the controls trying to stop the footage from being shown to the entire audience. However, in her haste, she accidentally rewound the video, taking us back to an earlier moment. We did not think the footage would get any worse for her. The rewound footage revealed something entirely unexpected. It showed John helping his mother install the CCTV system in her room. I don't even care about this charity nonsense. It's just an opportunity to show off how much better I am than all those lowlifes. Jane had to disrupt all my plans, but what can you expect from poor people, right? Her words echoed in the room, filling the air with a mix of shock and disbelief as her true intentions were exposed. It became clear that Mary's involvement in the auction had nothing to do with genuine philanthropy or compassion. It was solely driven by her desire to assert her pride and belittle others, using the event as a stage for her grand display of superiority. The revelation left the audience stunned. Their once high regard for Mary crumbled under the weight of her selfishness. The true purpose of her involvement in the auction was laid bare, tarnishing her image and exposing the emptiness behind her lavish lifestyle. However, I think what hurt me the most is seeing how John stood beside his mother laughing alone and nodding to her hurtful words. It was a painful sight to witness, realizing that his loyalty will always lie more with his mother's destructive mindset. The aftermath of Mary's exposed actions reverberated throughout her life. News of Mary's true character spread like wildfire within the auction community. Her deceitful intentions and derogatory remarks shattered her reputation. As word spread, auction houses, sponsors, and other connections distanced themselves from Mary, refusing to associate with someone who had shown such disregard for the true spirit of charity. The ban from auctions was a devastating blow to Mary as it severed her access to the extravagant events she had once thrived in. Without the allure of high-profile auctions and exclusive gatherings, 
Her ability to showcase her wealth and superiority was stripped away and left her financially unstable. John also found himself caught in the crossfire of his own choices. As the news spread and his reputation suffered, his unquestioning loyalty to his mother caused him to face its consequences. The trust that had once existed between him and his mother was shattered as she too turned her back on him. Mary blamed John for the mishap with the CCTV footage. Mary severed ties with her son, leaving him to feel alone and isolated. In the wake of the events, I found the strength to make a difficult decision. Recognizing that my marriage to John had been tainted by his mama's boy persona and our fundamental differences, I chose to step away and pursue a new path for myself. It was during that transformative period that I crossed paths with one of the event organizers, someone who had witnessed the entire ordeal and seen the strength and resilience I possessed. This newfound love interest became not only a partner, but also a source of support and inspiration as I forged ahead on my journey. We embarked on new ventures, leveraging the connections and networks that had come my way. He helped me progress in life attuned to my dreams, something that John was not able to help me with despite us being together for decades. As I stepped into the light of a new chapter, surrounded by genuine connections and fueled by purpose, I knew that I had found my true wealth, the wealth that no amount of money or material possession could ever diminish.